what seems to happen in the psychedelic state is that when something is positive, it has the potential to be incredibly positive to the extent of being euphoric and, and ecstatic. But similarly, if something uh, is negative, it has the potential to be quite hellish and dysphoric and frightening. Psilocybin is found in magic mushrooms and it's a compound that is broken down in the body into another compound which is very, very similar to a naturally occurring neurotransmitter in the brain or chemical messenger in the brain and that's called serotonin. Now their pharmacology is subtly different but what's so interesting about this drug is that that subtle difference in its pharmacology confers profound effects on consciousness. Our first study was published in 2006 in healthy volunteers uh, who received uh, psilocybin or a comparator drug, this was all in a blinded fashion, under uh, optimally supported conditions uh, in which they lay down on the couch, had eye shades on, headphones through which they listened to a program of recorded music. They were in the presence of two people with whom they had already developed a trusting relationship. Uh, and um, under those conditions, uh, a high percentage of people end up reporting a, <clears throat> a constellation of experiences, the most interesting piece of which is that it really falls into a category of something the psychology of religion people talk about as a primary mystical experience. Analogy that you could use to describe how the drug affects brain activity is either to say that brain activity becomes relatively disordered or disorganized in the state. Another thing that you could say is that it's not entire disorder, that rather it's more like the brain enters a more kind of anarchic state. It's fascinating. I think one of the interesting uh, implications of this kind of work is that we're bi biologically ha hardwired for having these kinds of experiences. It's not just unique to mystics, you know, spending years of meditation in a cave, that this is part of the human biology to have these kind of integrative experiences that can really set the stage and the platform for remarkable personal change. And our research has really been looking at how it works in the brain. Uh, so we've used a number of different brain image, imaging modalities or brain scanning modalities. Uh, one of them is functional magnetic resonance imaging, which uses high, high field uh, magnets to look at changes in uh, brain blood flow. The brain imaging work that we've done, one of the interesting findings was that uh, there's, there was a really quite marked decrease in brain activity in a particular region of the brain, which is overactive in depression. Uh, so this uh, region of the prefrontal cortex is, is uh, typically highly active in depression and a range of effective treatments for depression all normalize this overactivity in this um, region of the prefrontal cortex. And psilocybin did exactly that and it did it very rapidly. We're running two different trials now at Johns Hopkins. Uh, one is in cancer patients who are anxious or depressed secondary to their cancer diagnosis, generally a life-threatening cancer diagnosis. Although we haven't touched their disease process, they still experience the pain. They're still dealing with the fact that they're going to leave their loved ones or their children. In some cases, these are parents of, uh, uh, of, uh, of kids who are, who are young. Um, that sadness is still there, but there's also a larger framing of that, and so it's very touching. There's a growing consensus among scientists that drug laws and prohibition around psychedelic drugs is irrational, it's unhelpful, uh, and it, potentially it's, it's um, precluding uh, uh, people who are unwell getting effective treatments, and that's a shame. These are remarkable compounds with, I think, remarkable implications if we can understand uh, how they work and why they work.